Brimstone educational series where we highlight our strategic partners to bring you the latest practice management intel. My name is Andrea Shalapia, owner and founder of Ironstone, and our mission is to help you, the business owner and teams, to help you gain control, boost morale, and grow your practice. So today I am thrilled to highlight my dear friend and longtime colleague of 20 plus years, Ms. Judith Bowman. Judith is the president and founder of Protocol Consultant International. Now, Judith, I have a lot I want to share with my audience to really help understand your background. So if you will, let me uh, just share these wonderful things about you. You know, your mission at Protocol Consultant International is to empower future generations to present and give confidence and authority, advance trust, ignite critical interpersonal relationships, and maximize engagements. You have had a wonderful history. 1993, you started Protocol, and you have a career in sales and marketing background, graduate of Boston College, and studied business communication at Harvard University. That is wonderful. Not to mention that you have hundreds of publication in places like Newsweek, Forbes, uh, Business Week, Wall Street Journal, The Huffington Post. You're a syndicate columnist, popular radio and television personality, and you launched what's called the Glass Ceiling Shattered, where you're highlighting women CEOs that have shattered the glass ceiling. I'm excited to hear about that. Not only are you creating that uh, that series, but also microlearning and online training for your audience to really capture executive presence, first impressions, dining 101, mm -hmm. and how to stand apart in the series. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Excellent. You well, <laughs> Judith, I would love to just hear about how you developed your expertise and why your clients come to you. So thank you so much, Andrea, for that introduction. I'm thrilled, I'm honored, and uh, just really excited to spend this time with you and, and share some of our pearls that we kind of learned together uh, with your colleagues, esteemed colleagues and friends of Ironstone. So thank you so much for that. Um, <clears throat> so people ask me my story, and I don't really have a story other than to say that I was, I'm from upstate New York, from a family of five. My father came from very humble roots. He became a successful real estate developer. And he was out and about among judges and lawyers and bankers and, uh, and sort of learned as he went. And he would come home and make sure that we knew so that when it was our time to venture out into the world, we would be totally confident and secure uh, with anyone. And so it was make eye contact, a firm, you know, not a, a, a sloppy handshake, you know, a firm handshake and serrated edge faces in and, and all these isms and rules and gestures to keep in mind. So all this was just ingrained in all of us. And as you mentioned, I've been in the world of sales and marketing of intangibles and I would wine and dine these C-level people. And uh, I would be across the table from the CEO of ABC company, and I would see this hearty grasp, you know, the sort of the, the death grip. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or you never, or like, you know, yes, wondering if they're going to break your hand. <laughs> you no, know, right. But, I mean, even around glasses, and I thought, oh, my gosh, to myself, this, there's a need to remind or this person is forgotten or reinforced or maybe they've never been taught and no one is born knowing anything, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I thought there's number one rule of sales, identify the need, aha, there's a need to teach, to remind, to reinforce. And so once I had my son, uh, I was fortunate to have some uh, help and I said, I can start my business now. So one-on-one, -on -one, I was fearless with a group, I was petrified. And so I started the Etiquette School of Boston teaching the basics of etiquette and dining to the children where I thought I would make all of my mistakes. And uh, I was about six or seven months into my new business. And in one of my young adult classes, unbeknownst to me, was a reporter who ended up writing a story that landed on the front page of our local papers, papers here in Boston. And it was headlined something to the effect, uh, woman makes living teaching manners to children. And a couple of really fun things happened. One, the paper sold out. Uh, two, I received a call from three 
Fortune 500 CEO is basically mm. saying, can you do for our seasoned professionals that which you do for the children? Um, and uh, CBS sent in a film crew from New York and asked to film a mock class where I was told to get together 50 of my closest friends and family, not a small feat. <laughs> um, so my very first corporate class was on national television. Mm. And I was very relieved when that was behind me. <laughs> Um, so, and then we went corporate and <clears throat> of course I'm certified and now provide season of protocol certification, including train the trainer. Um, and then what happened was I recognized financial services as a huge niche market for us and our message. And I would pick up the phone and get this or open a door and get that almost literally, um, <clears throat> given the, the theme that financial services really um, didn't need this type of um, service or expertise. They sort of knew it. And um, so I unexpectedly got a call from a national sales manager at a ma major financial services firm um, inviting me to come in just out of the blue. So I was thrilled. Went in, we decided to do a, a pilot program, and the rest is history. So financial services is a huge niche. Um, and I believe the reason is, again, the uh, the clients of financial advisors are those who truly appreciate the very finely tuned nuances and kind of where we go with it all. So, um, absolutely, yeah. and that's and that's how you and I met several years back. And this was my my tenure um, at Dreyfus, and the experience for the classroom, and then the actual dining experience at the restaurant was unbelievable. So I am excited that people are coming back um, and getting together so that you can provide those live experiences yet again, because it's so much different. You know, this is wonderful to share mm -hmm. via Zoom, but those moments uh, in person and uh, around a dining table uh, and, and helping to know those nuances that are so vital and critical uh, that you may not even think about. So it's a it's a great experience. I, I know I loved it and, and I've taken those things with me uh, throughout all the years uh, that we've been connected. So without oh, no. question, without I'm question. And I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. And I thank you for that. So, and that's one of the great joys of what I do and hearing that. And certainly from you, it's, and, um, and it's, it's, uh, it's what it's all about really. So thank you. For that. Absolutely. Well, and you're an author too. So mm -hmm. I know we're going to talk about your books um, a little bit mm -hmm. later, but I want to um, share my screen with you because I know this is something that um, we want to cover and I want you to share with us uh, all around the whys of, you know, what you're actually, you know, providing to and how you talk about attitude and all of these things. So walk us through this, Judith, so we can have better perspective of what some do's and don'ts are in this space. Great, absolutely. Well, just a quick overview. Our, our mission is exactly identical to you and you all, you there at uh, Ironstone, I'm <laughs> sorry. And um, <clears throat> so we help professionals grow their business. We talk about nuances because it's not the big things that make or break deals, relationships, friendships, marriages. It's the little things, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's the little things that help distinguish us in really great ways from our competition. So, uh, and these nuances, by the way, are, are so subtle that others may not know exactly what was just said or done, only that you did something or said something uh, quietly to make them feel incredibly special, incredibly valued. And that's the goal. You want, me, you want to make me as your client or prospective client to feel like you're one and only, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what we're talking about with nuances. And then trust in the world has been severely compromised, right? I mean, and whether it's religion, politics, sports, Hollywood, education, it's it's been compromised, Everything. right? Mm -hmm. And so our challenge individually and collectively is to restore that trust because without it, there's no relationship. And we're all about growing relationships. So... Uh, we're talking about earning the right to advance. So how do you prefer to be addressed rather than assuming a Jack and Judy stage, Dr. Chandler, how do you prefer to be addressed? And let them say, 
please call me Jack or, uh, or Elizabeth. How does Elizabeth or Richard prefer to be addressed? So earning the right to advance. Excuse me, would you mind if I took a few notes, please? Even though it's assumed that, of course, we are not expected to retain everything. So asking these little nuances help distinguish us. They show and at the same time earn respect uh, and help you stand apart and basically outclass the competition. Um, so Judith, if I'm hearing you correctly, like you're asking really permission in every aspect of the conversation and the collaboration with the person that you're engaged with. So, you know, how do you want to be addressed? You know, may I take notes? So you again, it's really asking permission and being graceful and respectful through the whole entire conversation, if I hear you correctly. Absolutely, Andrea. And not assuming anything. Again, it's mm -hmm. endeavoring to grow the relationship. So may I offer you my business card? May I ask for yours rather than here? And mm -hmm. I'm not here to collect a bunch of cards. You know, if you'd like to spend, and I've had people say that to me. So I've learned making, again, every faux pas um, as, as we go, every mistake. So I say, please learn from my mistakes because I really have <laughs> made them all. Oh, I make mistakes <laughs> every day in this space. So uh, it's, a, it's a learning moment, a learning opportunity always. Yeah. Uh, the importance to just referring to the, to the uh, this board here, uh, the importance of projecting energy and enthusiasm because we as human beings are naturally drawn toward positive people and positive energy. So we talk about the Fabulous Association, which is the subtitle of my second book, Transforming mm. Mind to Fabulous. So in any, whenever anyone asks, Andrea, how are you today? Regardless of how you really may be feeling, you can <laughs> I'm fabulous, Judith. Thank you for asking nuance. And how are you today? So these these nuances, using names, um, emphasizing words, making eye contact. We talked about um, and all of this through body language. It all comes across. Sincerity comes across through your eye contact, your body language, or sincerity or not. And so, um, and these are, by the way, are color coded. So sincerity is, is blue and that's warmth and energy and, and enthusiasm are green and red, go. Mm -hmm. um, and then ultimately, all of these nuances need to be practiced just as with a sport or a musical instrument, because um, you know, once we, you don't just don't go on to the you know NFL and win the champion series. You just so to practice until everything becomes automatic and part of your mm -hmm. personal style. Uh, we talk about the four C's, which is this came to me many moons ago with a training book I wrote for a major hotel. But the idea of exuding confidence, so professional presence. What is presence? It's that it thing. It's that je ne sais quoi. So having and that's all inner confidence that's exuded. Um, uh, and then control the uh, the host to the what you always want to endeavor to be in the control seat from the moment you initiate the first handshake, initiate the eye contact, initiate the self introduction, initiate, acquire, and maintain control throughout. Always the goal throughout the relationship building mm -hmm. process. The idea of contributing to another person's positive, memorable experience. Contribute in the boardroom, contribute at the dining table. Don't just sit there and be invisible, so to speak. And then the other, the fourth C, of course, is connecting and mirroring. So they say in the world of dating, for example, if you're interested in the other person, to mimic them, to mirror them. And so if they sit back, you sit back. If they sit forward, you sit forward. If they take a sip, you take, not within the same second, however, within seconds to let them know you are with them, you are connecting with them. And when you think about it, aren't we all really courting new business, right? Absolutely. So, That's a great perspective of courting new business always and always, right. every day. Exactly. So, um, yes. So those are our four C's. Yes. Excellent. Well, I'm going to advance this because I know you have a, a great piece of information um, on this next. And, and I love this uh, piece of intel that we need to be mindful of with uh, Dr. Moravian. So tell us about this, Judith, of what the impact is ver verbally, visually, and then the content. Great. Okay. So thank you. Uh, so it has been said, uh, Woody Allen and many others, that 90% of success is 
showing up, right? Mm -hmm. So how many times have we all gone to, for example, a networking event and grabbed a friend or colleague and said, okay, come with me. I need to go. I've got it on my calendar. Let's go in, put an appearance, 15 minutes and we're out of there, right? We've all done it. Absolutely. Um, So we're suggesting that to continue to do so going forward is to totally not take advantage of this terrific opportunity to meet people that we might not otherwise have the opportunity to meet. So again, contribute and preparation is key. So Dr. Albert Moravian uh, from Yale, known as the Moravian Rule, devised this pie chart and it's based on verbal, visual, and content. Uh, Interestingly, despite all of the book knowledge, business savvy, and technical acumen that one might possess, that accounts for only 7% of others' perceptions and others' memories. So therefore, that places a huge emphasis on, thank you for inserting that, the visual, what others are looking at, Mm -hmm. including body language, attire, et cetera, accessories, et cetera, is 55% and verbal is 38%. So that 93% is what we focus on. That's a huge amount. So your words, only 7% uh, being the impact versus your visual and your verbal, how you sound, how you look, what you're presenting. So even if I said this piece of paper with this same visual that's on the screen, what are you delivering? You know, your materials that you're delivering, um, not just how you're delivering yourself uh, and visually and verbally. So that's a phenomenal perspective. 93% of our impact um, comes through no words whatsoever. Right. So true. And that's really something when you think about it. So being aware of it is, uh, is, is so important. And that's really, we're just creating an awareness of what we all sort of probably know and, and surmise, but it's true. And um, it's really fascinating. So knowing that and being able to work with it and, and uh, have it work for us is huge. Excellent. Ourselves, yes. Well, tell me now. I know you have several books. I've got those on the screen for us. Tell me what brought you to becoming an author. Why? Um, and what was your experience around it? Okay, great. Thank you for that question. So I would finish a program, and people would come up to me and say, "Where's your book?" Because, I, again, retention is seventy percent, right? So uh, I said, that's the book. I said, I've got to write a book. And um, I was very fortunate. This book, my first book, Don't Take the Last Donut, uh, was first published in 2007. And I'm very proud to say that I'm still getting royalties on the book um, 14 years later. So they tell me, and they usually retire a book after three or four. So I'm just, I'm so grateful. Um, and people, um, so it's one of those timeless books, I suppose. It's a, And that was, I'm very proud of that. My second book, uh, How to Stand Apart at Work, again, the subtitle, which I'm crazy about, Transforming Fine to Fabulous, remember to say it just like that, right. um, is. Uh, really written in a fine versus fabulous format to address the on-demand mentality culture of today. And uh, we're just releasing now our third book, Dining Savvy, Rules and Jewels of Business and Social Entertaining. And the jewels are the pearls, of course, pearls of wisdom. So uh, it's a a tiny little five by seven, um, 82 page uh, great gift idea book. <laughs> and uh, we're just in the process of kind of formally launching it now. So thank you for asking about all that. Absolutely. It's wonderful. I mean, like, well, it's it's great to be able to have access to the content that you're sharing and uh, because all of it is so vitally important. I always say it feels like the lost art um, uh, around, you know, business protocol and etiquette and how we are engaging and interacting with, you know, people. And now that we're in, a unique time in the world where we're more in this Zoom experience or, or you know, online experience versus in, in person. Um, it just is a much different feel. And, and even more important to your point of the 93% is visual and the verbal aspect of it versus just the content in and of itself. So hugely impactful, hugely yeah. impactful. Yeah. Um, well, I've got a lightning round now for you, Miss Judith. Uh, with several questions. And so are you ready? 
I was lightning round. round. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So talk to me about Mm -hmm. meeting protocol, because that is so vital of, you know, again, how we are interacting to, again, in a virtual versus the in-person. So what say you? Right. Okay, great. Thank you. So the there is nothing that will ever quite replace one-on-one face-to-face meetings, clearly. However, the virtual world is a is a really a worthy competitor and it has become an integral part of the universal landscape today. So, um, and there are some things that are very similar to one-on-one, but uh, basically there are challenges and uh, there are um, advantages. So the challenge is, of course, we don't have the opportunity to shake a warm hand and look into someone's eyes and and really assess anything other than a limited virtual background and whatever attire you can see. <clears throat> However, and knowledge is power. I just want to get that in. Knowledge is power. So therefore, our our sort of uptake on everything is limited. Um, The advantages are you don't have to worry about things like bad breath, (laughs) cold, sickness of death, okay? Mm -hmm. And anything other than your immediate virtual background being scrutinized. Um, So however, with both, there is still the opportunity to be a man, be a woman, well met. And so we have a list of uh, different, just some preparation is key, of course, as with everything. And uh, I just wanna, of course, you mentioned earlier lighting. Um, And so lighting is huge, having lots of, as I Boku to great Mm -hmm. lighting, and, and that coming from, emanating from the floor and the side versus uh, in front of you, and I think most people sort of picked up on that, but it's it's very, very important. Um, microphones and makeup, invest in great uh, microphones. The sound is huge. Makeup, the ladies, um, more, um, you know, more on the cheeks, especially the cheeks, lips, and for the flat of the forehead, the length of the forehead. And even for men, we suggest a bronzer or even a base makeup. I've noticed on a few stations there, it seems like when they want to try and make someone look bad, they up here with zero makeup on. And you can look <laughs> they, they could have looked if they mm-hmm. had given themselves a little bit of attention. So um, so having that is is a is is smart. It's a smart thing to give some attention to. Having a professional headshot at the ready for those times when you must walk away and knowing when to walk away is huge. Um, Your gaze, um, your natural resting face. So we here in America have always been trained to look at the person and eye contact is important. However, looking at the other person virtually takes our eyes away from Mm -hmm. the limit and you look at the person down here or wherever they may be. So it's important to start to train our brains to try and look into the camera lens so that the other person feels looked at and again, acknowledged, right? right? So, and then your natural resting face is really important because the camera is always on. We need to be always on too. And so uh, have, be aware if your natural resting face might be so. Um, So the other voice is very important, and I've picked this up from so many uh, people, really professionals in that field, but did you know that we only use, most people only use two notes in our voice? And Mm -hmm. so to be aware of of using, you know, get rid of the monotones, but using octaves and inflection and accents and emphasis, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> on certain words. And, um, but to really focus on a variance to keep people in, keep them with you, right? Um, further preparation is ha- always have an agenda, just as a, with real meetings, virtual as well. Send it mm-hmm. 24 hours in advance, um, or at least in advance if you're running late preparing that. And remember to put them on your agenda. That's happened to me once I've been called on it. Mm. Um, do your advanced client research. Know everything from favorite philanthropies to hobbies and to including company impending mergers or acquisitions. There are so many these days. Mm-hmm. So um, running late is another consideration. So of course, with a real meeting, we would notify the host in advance. Same with virtual. If you expect to be late, notify them in advance. Just don't show up and hope they'll get over it. You're noticed. You never want to be viewed as being late or less in any way. 
So the notification of the host in advance in both cases is really important. Um, so uh, if you do, if a host, if you as the presenter might be, uh, because people might be running late, let's say, mm-hmm. um, you then are forced to be in a position of either speaking really quickly to get through it or leaving out material. So to eliminate that, you as a savvy host um, will say, perhaps we're suggesting in the invitation, we plan to start this meeting promptly at 10 o'clock and then do it so that people can understand and no one takes personal offense. Okay, so we talk about body language and tics and isms and 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 uh, just nuances with that. So you always want to keep your hands on the table. You are why above board in that going, historic origin and that go, going to draw a weapon or a sword and decapitate them. I but, love the history that's a part of all of this of of where we have those those uh, one liners from and and what the meaning is behind it. So thank you. Thank you. I know it's always fun to try and include that when we can. So, but in no good girl pose. So forearms versus elbows on the table, uh, forearms and trying to keep your hands apart a bit. It's more authoritative, taking up more space versus together and sort of demure. So authoritative forearms on the table, very important. And that also helps control your picks and isms. And if anyone tends to twirl their hair or uh, you know, take care of a beard or <laughs> right, right. Um, so, and then small talk is really an, an inappropriate expression for something that should be called the opposite. And small talk is necessary; it's vital before a meeting. So, a real meeting, it's great. It's when you can signal someone across the table, or just lean over and whisper something to someone, or say whatever. Virtually, it's virtually impossible to have mm-hmm. small talk. Small talk, we suggest go offline for that. Excuse me. Okay, so host duties, of course, responsible for introductions versus announcing who's present, but to actually execute a proper introduction, and we go into that and we go over all of that. Um, Excusing yourself if you know you're going to have to leave early or take something, again, courtesy of notifying your host in advance. A situation that came up, come up, no need to go into why or details, lower details, just let them know. And if and when that may arise, just excuse yourself, post your mm-hmm. headshot and remember to mute your mic, right? Um, okay. I have been on many meetings where the mics have not been muted and they were taking a call or something altogether different that we got to listen to. So it's it's for entertainment, but very aware and necessary. Uh, if you're going to remain on that uh, virtual call without question. Yes, good. And then, uh, let's see, excusing yourself, leaving early, uh, never, okay? Uh, Especially if you're the new kid on the block, if you're the CEO, fine. Recapping for latecomers, these are all consistent with both. Um, Depends on who it is and how late they are, of course. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, it's usually the president or CEO who is the last person who asks to be have anything recapped they'll just they'll find whomever later and that type of thing so it's quite interesting Um, and then dress code we always suggest dressing and match above attire your presentation Mm -hmm. totally consistent um and so important so dressing a notch above presenting yourself as the consummate professional in your field of course and um a savvy host will always suggest you know why don't you dress for your GMA interview, <laughs> Ms. Andrea, yes. uh, versus yes. <laughs> versus um, versus we'll be casual. We can be casual for our time on Thursday. So mm-hmm. uh, to really set the tone and the very topic of attire says dress in something appropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Okay. If that, so if that's the question, then you already know to dress above, then more casual. Uh, just a notch above, again, mm-hmm. a professional in your field. Um, so I know that we talked about to background and the importance of customizing your background. So, for example, my background here is um, our floor banner with protocol consultants, mm-hmm. uh, our signature off-white rose, and of course the American flag, which I'm very proud of. And um, and I admire your background too. It's very warm and it's got your books and 
And uh, yes, and all all my my make it happen, you know, uh, notepad and and my flowers. But I also have the option for a virtual background. So I'm just going to be real here of what that can look like. So watch this. Here we can pull this up and change to a you know a green screen. You know, I found is so vitally important. Um, just from the aspect of allowing you to use a virtual background um, and and ultimately uh, be able to really see uh, cover up if you don't have a great background. So there's lots of options on on virtual backgrounds and and what those can look like and and all the like. Um, so that is something really simple to get and to have shipped right to your home uh, from Amazon. So easy to put that into place. So and I'm and really necessary too, right, Andrea? You need the green screen for the... The green screen really does make a huge difference. So I, I'm just going to pick um, something that's in the, the virtual background um, gallery that I have. And so, you know, I can look like I'm in this office, but without this green screen, you will have more of like a web-like and, and pixelated, if you will, um, versus, you know, having what is behind you here. So that green screen really does make a huge difference um, than without it. And if there's, you know, I have a window on the the side of me over here, uh, when there's bright sunlight coming through that, that's when you need to actually pull the shade uh, because it will come through the green screen and it will still make you look pixelated. So it's definitely a, a need in my opinion, to make it look really sharp and that much more professional if you do not have um, an actual background that you're comfortable with um, and, and can make that look seamless for your clients mm -hmm. or for whomever you're in that meeting um, with. Right. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Great. So I will put my <laughs> hydraulic green screen down and we the real one behind me. Many people have asked if this is a virtual background and I literally have to come back and touch the, the bookshelves so that they can um, know that 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 is a actual real background <laughs> indeed. Love it. Love so. It. Um, so, and one more topic, very important because we're all on Zoom for extended periods mm -hmm. of time. And, and again, we need to always be on too. So are we going to drink? Are we going to eat? Mm -hmm. Are we going to call? sneeze, blow our nose. So I said one word for any bodily function of anything, we got one word away. So if you're going to cough, turn away. If you're going to yawn, turn away. If you're going to sneeze, obviously into your, um, but what about drinking, Andrea? So my favorite cup is a Tervis cup, but I have learned from you, this is not the best choice. <laughs> <laughs> for a presentation. So I've gone from Tervis to Crystal. Um, so here's the difference. Yes. And so got the nice, you know, straw to keep the lipstick off, but Crystal is a much better representation, even though I can get more water in this one, Judith. <laughs> Crystal is a much better presentation uh, than my Tervis tumbler. So that's excellent. Right. Talk to me about, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just going to recap and just say, you know, we we definitely would like to be remembered as the crystal glass presenter rather than the plastic mm -hmm. water bottle presenter. So, <laughs> That's um, so true. That's so true. Well, talk to me about mm -hmm. a business card exchange. What are, what's the best practice? What are some things I need to be aware of in that perspective? Okay, great. So business card exchange clearly has been virtually eliminated virtually. Mm -hmm. However, it's really good to know, um, and uh, it's one of those timeless, I know it's, um, <clears throat> but the Japanese have taught us everything we need to know about business card exchange because most Japanese, excuse me, until most recently, have worked for the same company for life. Therefore, the business card represents one's life, mm. and global, so we can learn from our cross-cultural neighbors. So the quality of card is really important, so if someone presents you with a cheap, flimsy, or laminated card, you might want to rethink them being on your A-list. Um, and so you, if you're in the financial services world, for example, and you just started your own firm, you probably might want to rethink, this is exaggeration for effect, 
having a pink and green card. So <laughs> you in the nature of your business. So mm-hmm. uh, a couple of things, never assume anyone wants your card. We spoke of that earlier. Uh, may I offer you my card? Or may I ask you a cool card? Rule, never ask a very senior executive for their business card. They won't have one. If, however, a very senior executive offers you their card, consider it a great compliment. So we want to always present the most formal with a mm-hmm. thumb on either corner and to receive in kind. So if you see it coming, Andrea, with yes. two, you would receive. Now put, put it up high enough on your screen oh, exactly. so we can see. Okay, perfect. perfect. So yeah. then I would receive that with my two thumbs yeah. and accept that from you. Exactly. And then it, the less formal is with a thumb on one corner mm-hmm. and then in kind. And now the most important part of business card exchange is right now, right here, right now. And that is to acknowledge the card. So you want to look at the card mm. and just feel it as they touch it, caress it. Um, lots of ooh la la's type of thing. Ooh, president and CEO of ABC and uh, just really acknowledge their life. And mm-hmm. you don't want to discard the card, you want to keep the card close to you. And uh, actually, the most senior person in a, in a meeting should have, you should put their card on top of your portfolio. And everyone else would be quietly, strategically aligned around your portfolio. Why? So you can use their names during the course of meeting together and address them specifically rather than just throw out a question and hope you remember or whatever. And then if you are going to write a note on the card, always ask first the permission thing, right? Mm -hmm. I always ask and um, good. That's excellent. Um, I, you know, that's a, it is great. It's a cheat sheet to, to your point of putting your, when you're in person to put the cards around and where they're placed and sitting so that it's going to help you to remember that name. That's, that's wonderful. Um, I have a horror story on a business card exchange. I had asked permission as you taught me so many years ago and did that. And the gentleman that accepted my uh, business card then used it as a toothpick. So that was really fun. <laughs> so that's a beautiful what not to do um, with your uh, business card exchange. That's <laughs> very, yes. Oh my gosh, that's horrifying. Or someone giving you their last card saying, sorry, this is my last card and having, this has happened too, having it bent and, and mutilated mm. with coffee stains. Like do not, do not share right. that card. <laughs> right. Right. That one is more for file 13 than the exchange. So. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, okay. to, uh, one other item I want on our le- a lightning round. And so I'm going to share my screen again with you because let's talk email introductions. I know this is something that we do so much and all the time, but really making a purposeful uh, exchange via email. And I should say not only purposeful, but professional exchange by email. So I know I love introducing you to the clients and teams that we work with so that they can enjoy all of the things that you can educate them around. I have on the screen an example of an email but that I sent to introduce you to a, a client of mine. Just talk us through the elements of the email that are so important. And then I'm going to share your reply as well um, after we look at this screen. So point out the things that are most important about this. So first of all, I love the fact that this is real time, that this is what you and I did just Mm -hmm. habitually, naturally. Excuse me. Um, So the greetings versus hi or hello. Mm -hmm. versus gang or guys, okay? Mm-hmm. These are finely tuned nuances, exclamation point, energy, enthusiasm. There's immediate attention. It's 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 infectious, okay? Mm-hmm. And then you say, I'm so excited to make this connection, not just, I'd like to introduce you to, da, 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 you know, the standard, which is mm-hmm. fine, fine, nothing wrong with it. This is the fabulous. And these are the nuances that, that, clearly make Andrea stand out and have this get a lot more attention than it would for a normal introduction. And this ties us back to Dr. Moravian with our visual and our verbal and really that 93%, but coming through via email. 
Yes, exactly. Exactly. Thank you. So I love the way you um, include it. So, so the personal note to each, so Judith, and then some sort of, you know, in letting that person mm-hmm. know uh, a little bit of background um, about the person you're introducing, the same thing with John Smith, um, and, and just the, the finely tuned, just the words that you're using uh, with John Smith and the second um, <clears throat> the third pair uh, sentence, you and the team will have a fantastic experience. You're endorsing the uh, the service and the mm-hmm. message. Um, so it, it just the personalization here is, is fantastic. Uh, and mentioning that you've copied Samantha on this to help coordinate it all is brings makes it much more personal to you and Ironstone. It brings in your staff. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so, and I love the, you know, I'll step out of that, out, out of the middle to connect to you, mm-hmm. to begin this journey together that's implying a uh, an experience, a, mm-hmm. a, a, a venturing out together. And it's, it's so special. It's so unusual. And it's, um, I think it's beautiful. Uh, and then with gratitude. So the idea of best regards is sort of like have a nice day. It's sort of what the what the policeman says after they give you a ticket, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we'll say anything other than best regards. Okay. Uh, okay. But with gratitude or respectfully yours or with appreciation or admiringly yours, anything other than best regards um, is, and this is lovely um, with gratitude. And that's so you, Andrea, uh, it's beautifully done. Well, thank you. And I, I just love the highlights of, of what's important. So let's look at then your reply to that and just point out the best practices in your own reply. Sure. So uh, my note personally, so I'm mirroring mm-hmm. so I'm Andrea. So you didn't give me a colon, you gave me a dash. So I'm an Andrea dash. And so we mirror back. And so I'm just thanking you um, and using words for, you know, you're kind, not just thank you for your introduction to John Smith. It's, you know, it's kind and was most gracious. I need that to be acknowledged. I need to acknowledge that very special introduction. And then the personal to Mr. Smith. Before, again, we're not assuming anything. Had he mm-hmm. been that, that could have been a doctor or a chancellor. I'm not going to say Jim. Right. Um, so right. I prefer to be addressed. And that's always a nice lead in for future uh, correspondence because it's the first thing I'll say. Please call me whatever. So asking again, is that, is that important uh, nuance? And then I remain grateful to our mutual friend and colleague, um, Andrea Shalitia, et cetera. So um, just letting them know a certain time when I'll be following up, reaching out to you um, and looking forward to it. So, uh, you know, and adding, you know, if you would be so kind or if, if you please, mm. or um, as, as agreed or whatever the situation might suggest. And then personalize that. Um, it's a Merry Christmas. It's a Happy New Year. It's, um, uh, you know, if you know they're having it, have a fabulous, enjoy the dolphins, just to always sort of uh, personalize that if possible. So, um, and yeah, then- I think the personalization is just so important via email. It can be so misinterpreted. So it's just taking that little extra time to put those things in. I think it's what makes it so wonderful. It's, you know, unwrapping the gift via email that we are bombarded with so it might stand out so yes how do we handle thank yous um for whatever if it was a meeting or it was a gift or how do we handle those okay so a thank you for the meeting um both virtually and in person of course most these days are e-culture and so um an email uh, te- uh is appropriate Texting someone is more intimate, so we need to earn the right to do that. So always mm-hmm. ask first, how do you prefer to receive correspondence, but to email. And then, of course, there is nothing that will ever replace the handwritten, timeless, uh, beautiful, traditional thank you note. So think about personalized stationery, quality personalized stationery, blue ink, uh, warmth versus black ink, which mm-hmm. is primarily for contracts and signing agreements. Think about a postage stamp versus a postage meter and always personalize the note. Uh, The note is so important because you also have the chance to really show a little bit more of yourself and share information and grow the relationship over the goal. So uh, it's suggested too, I I just finished a book on uh, thank you notes. And uh, even if you can uh, 
try a little calligraphy or something different and just mm-hmm. what is not wrong it's maybe two or three sentences and uh but to do something different to help make you stand apart um is is really special so um and then always of course personalizing the note with something personal that you learn during the course of your time together. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Judith, you have given us so much content today and so many best practices. I value and just appreciate your time and and sharing your wisdom. How do we get a hold of you? How do we reach out to you? What's okay. the best way to do that? Thank you, Andrea. So my email is judith at protocol consultants with an S dot com. Okay. Excellent. All right. Excellent. That's wonderful. Well, again, Judith, I appreciate your time, your wisdom, your, your consult and our friendship over the years and just sharing your expertise. So again, thank you, Judith Protocol Consultant International. It has been a pleasure to have you on our educational series today, and I wish you all the best. Listeners, uh, I hope you have enjoyed the content and look forward to future educational series with our strategic partners. Again, Andrea Shalapia with Ironstone. Have a great day.